Hello, SWAG fans. Welcome to the Cricket Wireless SWAG Men's Basketball Virtual Media Day for the 2020-21 season. I'm your host, James Verrett, and we're going to start in Montgomery, Alabama with Alabama State. They have a new head coach in Mo Williams who has 14 years of NBA playing experience and, yes, a NBA championship ring. Coach, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, first question, you were hired under COVID-19 protocols. Do you think that may have even the playing field when it comes to recruiting because everybody was at home and they had to use different means to recruit? Well, you know, everybody was in the same boat um, for one, so definitely wasn't an advantage or a disadvantage um, in any way. Um, but at the same time, it, make, it makes it tough, um, not even the recruiting part, but – you know, have an opportunity when you first get a job early on to get around your kids, you know, and, and learn their personalities. Um, that's one thing that I didn't get the opportunity to do. Um, but at the same time, even guys that we brought in, you know, we didn't get a chance to actually go um, physically put our eyes on them. Um, so that was challenging. But at the same time, dealing with where we are today and the climate that we are is no complaints. Um, the guys that we have here, we're extremely excited about, um, you know, obviously I trust my eye. I trust my assistant's eyes and we watch countless numbers of films and actual games of kids. Our current kids that, that actually came back, we actually watched games of those kids. You know, we're not a highlight factory. Everybody looked good in highlights. So we don't really get caught up in the highlights. You know, we actually watched basketball games and got a good feel on what we was getting. And we feel real good about the group we have. Uh, when you look at uh, coaching your first game, coaching your first season, what will be your coaching philosophy for Alabama State? Well, absolutely. We want to get um, get up into our um, opponents. Um, we want to create havoc on the defensive end. We want to be um, tough in every aspect of that. We want to be a great rebounding team. And we do two, two of those things leads to our third one. We want to get out and run. We want to get out and get easy buckets. Uh, we want to play in a flow action, meaning get the ball down the court, run drags. But at the same time, we want to be um, really good at our half court execution um, because that will win championships. You know, last five minutes of the game, um, game slows down a lot. You got to be able to go get a bucket. You got to be able to execute. Everybody got to be on the same page. And those things that we're working on daily to get better at. Uh, with COVID-19, with the new protocols, will that affect your coaching style? I know in, in the pros, people are not necessarily uh, responsive to screaming coaches. College, you know, anything, somewhat anything goes. What will be your coaching style or has COVID made you adjust that at all? Well, I mean, I don't think anything can make me adjust that and COVID wouldn't be one. Um, but, you know, I would say my style is, you know, I'm a player's coach. I understand the player. Um, I'm laid back in a lot of ways, but at the same time, you know, I know how to be firm and get my point across. Um, you know, and I, I give my players a lot of uh, uh, respect as a man, and I respect them to do things um, as a man. And if they want to be treated like kids, uh, we can do that also. So I give them that option. <laughs> Um, in that order. And, and, and you know, to, to answer that question, everybody from 1 to 15, um, they bought in. We came in, we put a structure together, we, put a, we created a culture um, that a lot of our guys wasn't used to in a lot of ways. And um, obviously the first month, you know, we, you know, we, we had some, some guys just try us, we, we called it, they tried us. Um, but at the same time, that's creating the culture we wanted to create because at the end of the day, once your, your culture is created, that's how you win basketball game. That's how you stay together because you're going to face a lot of adversity. You're going to face things that, you know what, the only way you pull it through it is together. And the only way you can pull it through it together if you only if you're together. So we create a family. We, we, we create a family atmosphere. Um, I've been around my guys long enough. And every, each one of my kids, I actually love them. You know, I actually love them. Um, you know, I want the best for them. I want all of them to be successful. So just like my six boys at home, um, when they're, you know, need to be held accountable, I have no issue doing that because I want the best out of them. Um, and that's no different from one through 15. I heard that was the uh, secret reason why you took the job, because you're going to coach 
all of your kids and basically starting five will be your whole family. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the great thing about that, if that's the case, that's, you know, five scholarships that I don't have to pay for. So <laughs> they, they definitely going to get an offer. Um, but, you know, my, my goal is to change these kids' lives. Um, I've been in an opportunity in my life to, um, you know, I'm still young enough where they, they actually, you know, relate to me in a lot of different ways where they actually used to see me play. Um, and I know none of these guys knew me personally coming in. Now they know Coach Mo. Um, but at the same time, man, I'm, I'm just a down to earth, humble guy. Um, but at the same time, I get them to understand and all about life. You know, basketball is one thing, but one day you're going to be my age. And trust me, I can't run a lap no more. You know, I can run a couple of sprints, but that's it. You know, so life is going to go on. Uh, so the main thing is using this basketball thing for life experiences. You know, and, and, and basketball takes you through all those roller coasters. You know, obviously you're going to have adversity just on the court with, with going to class and doing all these things. It's just preparing you for life. So you use all those life skills that basketball coaches implementing their, their structure and their system and use them in, in your everyday walk of life, you know, being held accountable, um, being on time. If you're on time, you're late. You know, if, you, if you're late, you've forgotten. Simple as that. You know, you use that in your, your, your overall life atmosphere, then understanding that you have to get better and you got to get better as a person, not just as a basketball player. So that's what we preach. Um, academics is very important to us. Um, just to get them to understand graduation um, is, is very, it should be important to you, you know, so we, we preaching those things. We own them, um, you know, and you have kids. I mean, hey, they love basketball. They love school, um, being at school. But, you know, going to class, you know what? You're going to have to do that. That's part of that's part of the deal. It's part of the deal. You have to go to class. You have to do drink, do things the right way. And we implement those things. Uh, when you said that you looked at a lot of film and you looked at last season, uh, what is the baseline that you have for this team and where are you going to build them up from? What were the good things that they were doing? What were the things you think they can improve on? Well, you know, for one, it's a whole new system, a um, whole new team. We have eight new players. Um, we have six guys returning back from last year. We have seven guys returning back from last year. Uh, you know, five seniors that's coming back, you know, and, you know, most important for me is, you know, those guys decide to come back in the situation that we're in. So I want to make sure I do right by them and give them the opportunity. Um, but at the same time, they want to win. We want to win. So at the same time, I'm putting guys on the floor that's going to equate to winning basketball. And we've been doing a great job in practice. Um, do I have a starting five in my head? No. Um, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to let these guys compete, you know, and get better. Um, I see us being deep. I see us you know, playing a lot of different lineups. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm leaning on my leaders, uh, preferably my seniors. You know, DJ Heath is the leader of this basketball team. And I expect him to be consistent every single day, you know, with, with how he handled himself, you know, his mentality, um, just everything about his overall aura, you know, that, that he bring to practice and even off the court. You know, guys feed off that, and you have to have a leader on your team to be really, really successful. Uh, the moment that you it hit you that you were a college head college basketball coach at Alabama State, what was that moment? I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Um, it, it was it was really a goal that I set out to achieve, and um, you know, I'm big big on energy. I'm big on putting things in the universe. And I remember retiring in 2016. Um, I was still you know, running my AAU program down in Dallas that I sponsored for over 10 years at that point. And, you know, a couple of years in 2018, I decided I wanted to get into college coaching. And I said, hey, I'm going to go be assistant and learn the business um, for a couple of years. And my third year, I plan on being the head coach. And I just spoke that into existence. And I was assistant for two years. And the opportunity came up to be a head coach, and it couldn't have been in a better place. Um, I love everything about it. Um, they've been um, extremely grateful to me. Um, you know, I'm not a guy that need a lot. You know, I just want to get things accomplished. You know, I love results. Um, that's all I care about, you know, is results. You know, I'm not a guy that, um, you know, that's needy. You know, I'm, I'm a guy that want guys to come to work, you know, put their hard hat on, understand how to be respectful. 
and fly on the radar, but get big things achieved. I understand that. One last question before we let you go. Uh, you have a new addition to the family. Absolutely. Congratulations. Uh, how different was that experience going under COVID-19 protocol? Well, it was different. You know, he's he's uh, my newborn is three months. He's one of six, one of six boys, that is. And, um, you know, out of the other five, it was, you know, normal pregnancy. And this one here during COVID, you know, you had to uh, only one person was allowed you know, in the hospital, which was myself. And once I checked in with her, I couldn't leave at all until she was ready to go home. So uh, I joke all the time, said I was in jail for three days and I've never been, you know, uh, uh, locked up before, but I know the feeling, you know, staying in that one room, you know, for three days was tough. Having to bring me food and yeah, it was tough, but it was a joy because, you know, my, my, my baby boy was born. We enjoyed it. I watched a lot of Netflix and, Amazon Prime and all kind of good stuff. So I enjoyed it. It was different, but um, you know we we got another bundle of joy in the in the world. So I can't complain too much. You, are you sleeping now? Well, at first I wasn't, but we we got we got him on a good schedule now. He's you know he's three months, so he, he's starting to sleep through the night now. So we're we're good. Well, good good luck to you. Congratulations on the new addition. And welcome to the SWAT. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. Now by DJ Heath, senior basketball player for Alabama State Hornets. Thank you for joining us. And first things first, when did you know it was real that Mo Williams would be your new head coach? Yeah, I believed it, but uh, I didn't like you said. I didn't. I didn't believe it till I, I got down here and physically saw him. Uh, it was. It was. It was a shock. Of course, it was like, wow, Mo Williams is really my coach now. So. Yeah, it's a joy. Uh, definitely grateful for the experience so far. And I plan on having a good year. <clears throat> uh, which one of your friends asked you to ask him for some type of LeBron's signature item? Uh, nobody asked about LeBron's signature item, but uh, people did ask for autographs and stuff and a chance to meet him. Mm, so did you ask Coach him? Could no. I have your autograph? No, I ain't asked Coach. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't asked him. That. <laughs> okay, let's talk about last season. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys went on a win streak, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the season, things sort of fell apart. Mm -hmm. What made that win streak happen, and what transpired to make uh, the season go in the opposite direction? Uh, really, we came together. Guys, guys were really willing to buy in. We was playing championship basketball. Guys were playing unselfish. Um, buying into whatever the coaches was dishing out to as far as game plan going into the game. And, and guys were just being, like I said, being more together. So that really they, they really made us go on the run. And I mean, we was playing really good basketball then. Uh, as far as how it transpired on downhill, um, we did the total opposite. Guys was for themselves. Um, wasn't really buying in, and it's nothing the coaches could do at that point. So we just went downhill. We couldn't get it back together. When it was the time for swag play, we were trying to crank it back up, but we ain't had no more in the tank. Uh, what are your expectations uh, this year for this ball club? Uh, most important, it changed the culture here. We got a new coach. Uh, I want uh, Coach Mo to do good here. You know, his first season as a head coach, and I want to be a, a part of changing the culture here. I want to win the SWAC, of course. You know, we can't play in the um, postseason, so definitely want to win the SWAC, get something done while I'm here, be legendary, and that's it. Uh, when you look at uh, his thought process on the offense, are you excited about what he's been telling you and what you guys have been talking about offensively? Most definitely. Uh, he want to play fast. He want to get up and down. And uh, that's right up my alley, of course. Uh, and the team we got, uh, the chemistry, the way the way he mixes it in, is it, definitely, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely good. Uh, defense has always been uh, an anchor for Alabama State men's basketball. Is the little tweak going to make it even better? Uh, for sure. Um, they want us to play aggressive on defense and every uh, guys talking. Uh, communicating, helping each other out, uh, really playing help defense. Uh, offense, like they say, offense turns to defense, defense turns to offense, so we'll be fine. <clears throat> uh, I know you guys haven't had an official practice yet. 
And has anybody on the team said, uh, we can't wait to play coaches versus players in the half court? <laughs> now, a couple guys have uh, been asking the coaches for uh, for a couple one-on-one games, but uh, Coach Coach Trey get out there and play. Coach still get out there and play sometimes, but like most said, he don't really hardly do anything anymore. He'll, he'll, he'll shoot you in the contest or something, but as far as him physically playing, he won't play, but the coaches can still play. They got a lot of game <clears throat> still. <clears throat> Uh, from all of his years in the NBA, what do you think he's brought to Alabama State that you know that professional players do in order to enhance their game? Um, far as work, they, he's showing us how to work and be pros. Um, the schedule we have, the way the way the practice goes, uh, everything is like pro like. He's teaching us how to be pros, and that's like one of the most important things. And, not just pros on the court, but off of the court as well, uh, being professional at all times. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about off the court. How different has life been at Alabama State with all of the new COVID protocols? Uh, life has definitely been different. Uh, uh, it's been different. You just got to follow the rules, follow the protocols, keep your mask on, try not to catch COVID, basically. Trying to stay healthy for the season, get ready for the season. That's about it. <clears throat> I hear you. Uh, while you were away at, at home in Anniston, a lot of things during social justice was talking about how uh, black males interact with police. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your thoughts on that? And did you participate in any of the social justice activities that happened in your neck of the woods or anywhere else? Uh, I didn't participate, but uh, I definitely felt a certain a certain way. And uh, it's just shocking that we live in a society still as as we live in today, because I mean, one day I want to have kids, and I don't want my kids to have to go to the same thing. And that's that's tough. I don't know what I'm going to tell them, but hopefully by then I'll have the words to, to tell them something. And it will be all right. I hear you. Uh, as you travel the SWAC, uh, outside of your home, which is a tough place to play, what is the toughest place for you to play in the conference? <laughs> uh, I have to say, Perry, Perry, tough. Very tough place to play. Uh, they're on the win streak at home, right? Still, is it broken? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you see, they're on the win streak. It's very tough to play in there. Uh, yeah, I have to say them, and then probably Southern or Texas Southern. <clears throat> what makes what makes that west that that western trip so difficult for you? I, I don't want to blame the refs, but. They got something to do with it, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, it's tough. It's tough to play down there. Uh, they, whoever you gonna play hard for forty minutes, you know they always gonna stick around, even if you get ahead on them. They always gonna they always gonna grind it out and play tough. They got a really good coach down there, really good system, and it's just it's just tough to play down there. And they got good fans, and it, like, you know the gym they got a mini dome, so like they they kind of pack it out. So that's 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 the biggest part. <laughs> During uh, all of the COVID-19 protocols and quarantines and things of that nature, how were you able to stay in shape and what did you have to do in order to stay in shape? Uh, I was able to stay in shape because um, the community center is open back up. But, uh, and I was, I luckily I had a relationship with all the people that was over the, uh, the gym. So I was able to get in at a certain time every day and get in get some work in. And then as far as conditioning, I was doing a lot outside running and stuff like that. So uh, I was I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, know people and use my connections. So when the fans come to Montgomery to see you play, mm -hmm. what do you think uh, will excite them the most about this year's Hornets team? Uh, the way we play, the style of play we'll be playing. We're going to play fast. It's going to be exciting to see guys who play, play like that. Uh, we got a lot of talent, I think. It's one of the first teams I played on that – I don't think we're missing anything. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to see, uh, especially with Moda being the head coach. Uh, we definitely, we definitely should do big things this year.